This is JJ from Neo Cash Radio. I'm joined by Mario Costanz, the CEO of CryptoTaxPrep.com and author of Crypto Taxes Made Happy, the definitive how-to guide for preparing cryptocurrency tax returns in the United States. Mario, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Mario, so let's let's first discuss you. How long have you known about crypto? So I started first uh, looking into the crypto space in 2016. Uh, I have a our startup here, Happy Tax, is a you know a tech enabled company and is uh, really kind of shaping up the way income tax preparation in general is done. So I was hearing a lot about fintech and blockchain, and uh, every time those conversations came out, uh, it was always around. Uh, banking or investments or insurance, but never taxes. So I actually coined the term uh, taxes are the forgotten fintech. And uh, at that point in time in 2016, we actually uh, worked on a a proof of concept and filed a patent that's still pending uh, for utilizing a blockchain for tax preparation to eliminate the whole manual process that goes into tax preparation now. And that's still a project that we're working on. But that said, I kind of immersed myself in the uh, blockchain space since then, and made a whole lot of great connections and friends. And uh, in 2017, when I saw uh, crypto trading going mainstream to some extent uh, with the rise of prices, uh, we uh, built a new division inside of Happy Tax called CryptoTaxPrep.com to assist those traders for the reporting requirements uh, for purposes of taxation. Uh, for those trades that they're making. Happy Tax, that's a, that's a company you've been running for a little while and you've been successful with that. Let's just you know, quick tell my listeners about that. Yeah, so in 2014, I uh, sold a traditional tax business I had. I actually scaled it up to 99 offices in five states. Uh, after I sold that uh, office, uh, those offices, I uh, was looking to create a new way to get taxes done to, that would solve for the many challenges that I had in managing and staffing uh, that operation. Uh, generally, people are really good at uh, one of two things, either tax preparation and computer work and tax law or sales, marketing and business development. And yet the tax business is one where uh, people are generally asked to do it all. So uh, at Happy Tax, we split those roles and sandwich technology in between. We've got some a mobile app and some other technology that helps facilitate people to give concierge type service, meeting with their clients uh, to gather the initial data, which then gets sent securely to our group of US-based licensed CPAs who do the tax preparation. So everyone specializes in what they do best in the happy tax model. But you're, you're using sort of division of labor and, and uh, you know, which makes sense. You know, people who are sitting behind, you know, number crunching and, and that sort of, you know, focus aren't necessarily going to have the time or capacity to go door to door or communicate or direct mail or marketing sort of stuff. Nor that they, nor that they often want to. It's right. usually like the last thing in the world they want to do. Exactly. Yeah, that's kind of what I was getting at without saying. Uh, so then you, you get into crypto. Uh, obviously, the next, you mentioned the, the forgotten uh, aspects of, of crypto and taxes. So now you're, you're, you wrote this, this book. I mean, is this, is this a brand new release? Yeah, I actually released it, uh, I want to say, uh, sometime in mid-March uh, or towards the end of March, actually. Um, and it's uh, been doing pretty well so far. Excellent. Uh, and and it just just give us, give us a brief overview of what this book talks about. Sure. So, I mean, it goes into all the rules and regulations as they now uh, stand uh, for uh, what happens when you either are mining crypto or trading crypto. Uh, or many of the other intricacies that go along with cryptocurrency as it relates to tax and regulations. Uh, so it's very detailed, uh, but it's written from a perspective, not from a like a tax law person. It's written for uh, in, a, in a way that people can understand it. I mean, if you're trading crypto, you kn- you already know all the uh, knowledge that you need to get into this book, but it will clarify many of the misconceptions that are out there. Uh, and now, it's kind of, you know, the core of it comes down to the IRS has only released one piece of guidance as it pertains to cryptocurrency and taxation. Uh, that was back in 2014. There's still a number of items that uh, we discuss in the book that, you know, are either vague or um, yet to be determined. Uh, and majority of all of this information has no precedent. So there's been no tax law challenges. There's uh, tax court cases uh, that we can rely on. And other than that initial determination by the IRS that crypto is property for purposes of taxation, they've been silent ever since for the most part. 
Yeah, and, and see, and that's the thing that I think you struck upon in one of the key factors is that the tax law as it's written or as it stands is not written to be understood by the lay, lay person. It's it's written in a codified language almost. I mean, are you getting a lot of business from the crypto end? Is there Do you, do you see a lot of uh, trend upward and, and people looking into this stuff? Put it like this. So we've actually been ranked two years in a row by Entrepreneur Magazine as the fastest growing tax service that exists in the United States right now. And CryptoTaxPreps.com is our fastest growing division. So um, it is extremely exciting. Um, there's you know, a, a real interesting uh, market scenario in that there are very few practitioners, uh, CPAs, tax preparers, uh, et cetera, that uh, have any clue as all the intricacies that go into the crypto side. Now, in, in its core, crypto taxation is just almost like uh, someone would buy and sell a stock. Uh, but it's so much more elaborate in that there's uh, so many different outlier scenarios like decentralized exchanges, like uh, mining, uh, like uh, hacked coins, um, you name it. And we talk about all these in the book. Uh, and so most practitioners really don't have a lot of experience, let alone knowledge on how to do these returns properly, uh, as well as everything that goes into actually manually reconciling those transactions. Because unlike stocks, uh, where a brokerage would just issue you a, a, what's called a 1099B at the end of the year uh, that you would then include on your tax forms, uh, you have to kind of manually put all this data together. And the, the data as it currently comes out of the exchanges is coming on different formats and usually missing part key parts of information that need to be manually tracked down. So it's a supply and demand scenario like I've never seen before in my 20 plus year entrepreneurial career uh, where there are so many people that need this service uh, you know, millions of people have traded crypto. Uh, we, uh, based on our estimation and some industry information, um, it, it seems about uh, in 2017, about three and a half million people had not only had Coinbase accounts, but also had accounts on another exchange, which is where things get specifically complicated. Someone just has Coinbase and they've just bought um, and held or uh, made a couple of transactions in there. The reporting is actually pretty good. Uh, the problem comes when you move crypto from one exchange to another, uh, this whole reconciliation process has to happen because you have missing cost basis. You have scenarios where uh, they're booking these transactions as sales when it's really just you moving your crypto from one exchange to another. Uh, and most practitioners have no idea what all, all this is happening. And as I mentioned, you've got 3 million people um, that are in this zone of having some type of uh, crypto trades on multiple exchanges, creating that extra layer of reconciliation and bookkeeping that needs to be done prior to even even getting it to the tax return. So it's really exciting. And, uh, you know, I love the people. I love the clients that we're getting to work with. Uh, and, you know, we've scaled this up. I saw this coming uh, last year, uh, being that I was already kind of working the intersection of crypto and taxes sure. uh, and saw that many of the traders were going to need this. And, you know, we heavily invested in making sure that we had the resources in place. Uh, in fact, we've had over 100 CPAs and accountants in our tax department uh, working this season uh, and have this specialty and are able to service the client. So I'm loving it. And we're, we're uh, just uh, really excited to close out the season in the next couple of weeks here. There's a lot of people out there that need this this sort of help because the answers aren't readily available for one and for two, uh, you know, they, turning to a normal tax person, a normal tax accountant. There, you first, then you, you just imagine having to explain blockchain technology to them. We've gotten a lot of clients that have started to with their regular. Um, guy or girl or firm. And then they ended up saying, well, I don't know how to do all that stuff. <laughs> so then they came to us uh, to, to get us to kind of fill in the gaps, including some of the big four firms, believe it or not, big four accounting firms um, have referred us clients. Uh, so that's actually really uh, validating for what we've put together. Totally. Uh, so one, one of the big things, and I think you, you touched upon it, is the, the report and the recording what happens with your, your, your crypto movements. And because there are so many different exchanges and certain coins or tokens are only available on certain exchanges and the fact that everything gets is moved around so much, besides you know trying to do really good recording of what you do with your crypto, is there any sort of tips that you can give uh, our listeners to sort of help them get their, their stuff ready for the, the tax preparation? With this, 
question. The IRS requires the, the, the taxpayer keep good books and records. Now, the good news there is that you know, some of this information is recorded on a blockchain and it's a public ledger that's you know, never going to change. It's always going to be there and it's extractable in most cases uh, to go ahead and kind of back into uh, whatever needed to be done. Uh, that said, uh, the trades that are happening inside of an exchange generally aren't on a blockchain, but most exchanges have the ability to export uh, those transactions out. Uh, either via CPSVs or APIs that could directly link with, link with some tools that we use. There are a number of uh, really good commercial tools in the marketplace that help to aggregate this data from the various exchanges, as well as uh, you know offline wallets uh, as well, that will uh, then be able to be kind of put into a, a usable type of format that could get into the tax return. Uh, a couple of the tools that we use and we've got corporate partnerships with uh, are Bitcoin.tax and Cointracking.info. Uh, they're both really good tools. Uh, another one um, is TaxToken.us. Um, and the scenario uh, around, you know, we just utilize those tools to aggregate the data. But then we, as I mentioned before, we need to fill in the gaps because the data coming in needs to be massaged and, and, and completed because when you're moving, you know, dozens, hundreds, or even thousands of trades, and we've got actually a couple of bot traders that have hundreds of thousands of trades already working with us. I imagine. Uh, it, it becomes, uh, to some extent, a nightmare, but it's a nightmare that we can kind of uh, help people to clean up in a relatively uh, normalized fashion because of the expertise uh, and the team that we have. But ultimately, um, you know, this is stuff that you can do yourself too. I mean, 40% of people in the US do file their own tax returns. 60% of people pay someone else to do it uh, with something as complicated as a 70,000 page tax code uh, and something as new and um, innovative as cryptocurrency with little or no guidance in some certain areas. Um, it is definitely highly recommended to work with a professional, but um, by all means, you can utilize one of those tools, fill in the gaps yourself and ultimately fill out your tax return uh, without the guidance of a, a professional. But you've made this book available for free for people if they if they want this information. That's, is that right? Uh, yeah, it's available free in digital format. Uh, if you wanted the paperback, there is a cost to that. Uh, however, if you wanted it on Kindle, uh, whether or not you have a Kindle device, you can use it on Kindle online uh, through Amazon and also uh, on the Apple platform. So we've done that very strategically because there's so little good information out there. There are a handful of other kind of eBooks or um, you know people that have attempted to create some of the guidance, but um, we feel very strongly that you know the the amount of information it's 181 pages of information uh, i've heard that it's a pretty good easy read though um it also kind of layers in a little bit of my personality and kind of real world advice too not only uh it believe it or not does not talk deep deep detailed about the tax code it analyzes and, and kind of turns that into layman's uh from a crypto perspective again i'm here in the space just like everyone else and i love crypto and i invest in crypto and i have for some time now and uh definitely have made it available for free through a partnership with Amazon uh, just to help get the word out about the, the brand and also, more importantly, to give that knowledge to people that, um, you know, we, we love working with smart people. So whether or not uh, they want to read the book first or they don't want to read the book or they want to read the book and, and not use our service, that's cool too. Um, all about empowering people. Excellent. Well, that's that's great. So you're you're into crypto. You you're you've been doing this for a little while. What's what sort of excites you about crypto right now? And then looking forward, what what are you looking forward to? We're so busy. That we're excited mostly about uh, uh, in in terms of the tax side of things about uh, data standardization from uh, exchanges. And now there is not data standardization currently. It's one of the initiatives that we're working on and we'll be working on diligently um, throughout the rest of the year um, to try to have a simpler system for people next year. Um, the amount of time and energy it takes to do this properly um, is appalling. I mean, it's just not cool. Um, and if we could have better systems in place so that people can have better visibility into their data and not have exchanges sending uh, data with holes in it uh, or data that's actually inaccurate in some cases, um, that would make people's lives a lot easier. And that translates into real world um, use cases for crypto. I mean, the reality is, and people probably heard this before, but you know, if you use crypto to buy a cup of coffee because it's property, that's a capital gain or loss. And that needs to be reported on your tax return. Now, is that 
a sustainable way to uh, take a technology that is world changing and make people really want to use it? Chances are no. I mean, and, and I, I use crypto for buying goods and services. And I know a lot of people that you know run their whole businesses that way. Uh, but the reality is it's not a good scenario there either. So we're very hopeful that uh, we will be able to get some legislation passed that will create a de minimis exemption for those types of transactions. And people don't have to be uh, carry the burden of having to you know, handle every single trade and transaction um, for goods and services uh, flowing into the tax return. It just creates an unnecessary uh, blockade into getting real world usage um, from cryptocurrency and getting the true power of blockchain technology, which is to you know create trustless systems and um, eliminate these middlemen, um, which will create true efficiencies and really help us to have a better world overall. So, uh, I think that the, the lead, the takeaway from creating better systems, processes, and um, you know use cases for crypto will uh, have s- significant impact from hopeful legislation. And, you know, that comes down to us too. I mean, you know, there's a lot of people in the space that kind of just, you know, complain about it, but, you know, the United States, we've got laws and we've got processes and, you know, we could get active and we can get vocal about um, the power of this technology to our government and get them to make change. And I know that they're open to it. You know, we've talked to a number of people from the government and from the IRS. Uh, They definitely see it too. Uh, but they need to hear from everybody. I mean, we need to talk to our congressmen and we need to, you know, make sure that we support. There's, a, there's two congressmen that have formed what's called the Blockchain Caucus. Uh, seek them out on the Internet. Let them know that you support them. And, and let's get some legislation passed that, that creates better uh, ways for us to fully leverage this technology. Where can people go to find out more about uh, your business? The best place to go is a cryptotaxprep.com, or you could just Google myself or, or Happy Tax and uh, a significant number of uh, reading material and research available on us throughout the net. Excellent. Well, thanks so much for being on the show. You got it. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for listening to this special episode of Neo Cash Radio. Share this episode with anyone you think needs crypto tax help. NeoCashRadio.com. Radio.com.